Welcome to NPS Now and the Fall Sports Special. I'm Steve Sutman, the Senior Coordinator of Athletics, and we're here to talk about fall sports. Our first guest is Andy Hilton from 757recruit.com. And I might have messed that up, but I'm going to give you a chance to, to correct me. Absolutely. It's recruit757.com. Okay. Tell us a little bit about what recruit757.com does, what, what you do, and then what it does for our student athletes, our parents, our coaches. And I've been running it. I've been running it for about five years, and started it initially as a blog to help local players get more exposure and help them with their college recruitment. And it's evolved over the years. Now, uh, as a full-blown operation, it's what I do full time: is help kids get recruited for college by educating not only the kids but the parents in the process of recruiting. Work with the colleges in getting more colleges here to offer scholarships and overall provide news on the football players of the region and provide a database of all recruitable football players. So it's an all-inclusive resource mm -hmm. when it comes to recruiting and football. So a parent or a student, um, how do they get on your website? Um, what, what's entailed in that? What's the mm -hmm. process of that? Well, anybody can access the website to find out more about the athletes of the area. The difference is that they can also subscribe. Parents, coaches, players can subscribe to have control over their player profile. We have over 500 players in the 757 area code at any one point in time in our database as a who's who of the area. These are all kids that want to get recruited for college and a parent, as I said, or a coach mm -hmm. can subscribe and claim the player's profile and give updates that college coaches can see a full array of information, whether it's personal information, contact information, GPAs, self-provided information that helps the recruitment process. Right. It's a good segue. Uh, and, and you're here to talk about football players in this area, more specifically than off of public schools, the Eastern District. So we're going to start with Granby High School. What can Granby High School and, say, and, and, the new, and the new football coach, Coach Wilson, Sekou Wilson, what kind of players do they have at, at that level of, to be recruited? And then how do you think Granby uh, will fare in the Eastern District? And then we'll talk a little bit about conference, or, or not conference play in football, but regional play a sure. little bit later. Yeah, and Granby being part of a, as, as a 6A program, they're going to compete in the Eastern District as the majority of their schedule. They have a little bit of tough road in that they are rebuilding. Uh, Coach Kurt Brown left. He uh, is now at First Colonial as an assistant. Sekou Wilson's taking over the program as an assistant. He's familiar with the players, but the cupboard is somewhat bare there. You've got Quentin Brown really as their key player who's going to play on both sides of the ball. He's been playing a lot of defensive tackle coming up. He was a starter as a freshman. Now coming into his senior year, it's prime time for him. He's going to be expected to be a big leader. He's about a six foot five, 220 pound athlete who can do a lot, can move well probably is going to play linebacker at the college level and the big concern for him is getting more offers as mm -hmm. I speak to recruitment and know how the recruiting system works he holds no offers at this point but he's got a strong possibility of landing uh, opportunities especially from the service academy seem to be the most okay. interested in him he could end at a school end up at a school like army okay what uh, any other players at Granby that um, kind of catch your eye maybe that mm -hmm. would catch a college recruiter's eye they have a couple of linemen and foul at at uh, and also yes <laughs> that's uh, he has he moved from the area from Hawaii mm -hmm. and actually has remarked at how much uh, stronger football is here as compared to Hawaii. And if you, you think of Pacific Islanders being recruited a lot, sure. he's a lineman. He's in that mold. He's about six foot two and 300 pounds, really strong lineman. You also have Julian Powell Riddick as another lineman who's a little bit bigger and also have opportunities, uh, has opportunities. I would look for both of those players to go to a smaller Division I school. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you, you see the linemen, and, and, and what I've seen across the district is some of our lines are just massive. The kids get they, bigger they are, every they are year. Really big kids. So um, we're going to look forward to watching those kids, how they perform, and how they may be able to lead Granby uh, into the Eastern District, and then maybe even get a uh, one of those playoff spots uh, in that Region Six. So absolutely. Um, all right, let's let's move to uh, Region Five or, or Class Five A, um, Norview High School. Mm -hmm. Norview. Coach Cotton now has that program as his own. Now that he has 
been there for a year, uh, coming into year two. He has uh, a lot of great athletes. And the story at Norview is not so much the line, but the skill players. Mm -hmm. Charles Garrett is probably the biggest standout in terms of linemen. He's about six foot four, 270 pounds, big offensive tackle. He'll contribute a lot, but you have at quarterback, EJ Faison. Yeah, veteran. Yes, he's coming into his senior year. He's played quite a bit already for the pilots and he's expected to do big things for them this year. He's gonna be challenged a little bit by DJ Mack, who's a younger player. He's coming into his sophomore year at quarterback and he is the future for Norview. So when EJ is not in the lineup as a quarterback or not in the game as a quarterback and DJ and EJ and DJ, uh, you can expect to see very little drop off and actually Mac is going to be one of those kids who's going to show a lot of promise this year if he performs as expected. Well, that, that, that's a great um, segment in terms of, of a player coming from our middle school program and, and helping that high school program out right away. So our middle school program is, is benefiting um, the high school programs immediately now. And, and he's one of those players that, that had a really good career at the middle school level mm -hmm. and now he's at, that, um, at the high school level. And there are school systems around here, unfortunately, that don't have middle school football. And it's beginning to show where programs, where middle school programs are in place, the high school programs are certainly benefiting. Okay. What, who else at Norview, that, uh, some skilled players that, that we need to look for. Deshaun McLaughlin has uh, done some good camping over the summer mm -hmm. and uh, has been looked at by Old Dominion, has looked at by a number of schools at that JMU type level okay. and certainly expects to have a good year. That's the one thing with Norview, you have a good wide receiver core, they're gonna throw the ball a little bit more than most programs would at the high school level. Well, I, I think the key for Norview is Coach Cotton because he's, he's come in and, and provided stability for a program that hasn't had that. And, and they made the playoffs last year, and I think that's what they're, they're going to That's going to be for. a stepping stone for them. They're yeah. going to build on that, and I expect to see that program yeah. grow. So uh, we, look to, we, we are looking forward for uh, big things at Norview. Now, Maury High School is our next 5A school. What about Maury High School? They're coming off a of playoff season. Um, they haven't been to the playoffs lately, but uh, Coach Frazier has got them back into, into that uh, arena, and, and that's a good thing. So what about Maury High School? Maury is another program where continuity is going to pay off. Chris has been there for a couple of years now. Uh, you're seeing a lot of athletes, again, good skill players uh, coming through that system. Devin Puck Perry is uh, their quarterback. They also have, uh, I'm trying to remember his first name, Bam Harris, as uh, up, up and coming uh, quarterback there okay. as, a, as a freshman. So they're going to see a little bit of splitting time. But the nice thing is, some of those athletes are so interchangeable that uh, they can be put at running back, they can put at wide receiver. Of course, they're going to play a role of defense. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pieces and parts at Maury that work very well together. And of course, you can't mention Maury without mentioning senior, now committed to Old Dominion, yeah, there's recruit, the recruit yeah, Tarek that's, Wilder. That's, that's and it. that's the first recruit this year for uh, out of this 2015 class. Uh, already committed to college, and Derek is a key senior leader for mm -hmm. that program and will play a role on both sides of the ball. Okay, what about at running back for Mari? You might have mentioned uh, Little. Uh, uh, Delvion Little, yeah. yes. He, his name is uh, gonna be called a lot this year. Now he's and, a sophomore, right? Yes, he is. So in that process, is, is the recruiting going taking place for him right now, or is that, is, he, is that too early in the process? It's or? never too early to get recruited. And okay. of course, the higher level athletes will be, get recruited as they are younger, you know, freshmen and sophomores. But even if Delvion has a big sophomore season, that will have an impact on his recruitment because the biggest year for recruitment is the junior year. But it's never too early to start with recruiting. And that's something I tell parents all the time. Mm -hmm. If you have a college that you're interested in, go ahead and make contact with that college or those colleges because the sooner you're in their system and the sooner you're on the radar, the better it's going to be for that athlete. Okay. All right. Let's go on down a level to the 4A level. We got Booker T and we have Lake Taylor. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about Booker T. Jim Flowers is in his second year. Yes, he Coming is. Coming off a, a three and seven record, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but they had a, a, a good uh, winter conditioning program. Coach Flowers has brought in some veteran coaches that are going to provide some great teaching and leadership. And for me, I'm looking at Booker T to maybe be a surprise. Uh, but so what do you think and what kind of players? There's no doubt like? they had the athletes. And Coach Flowers came in late last year, mm -hmm. didn't really get a full year or full off season of conditioning, as you mentioned. Uh, the program suffered a little bit because of that, and there's been a little bit of disarray, but I think he has things under 
control now, and there's certainly some great prospects there, whether you're talking about sure Jamari is. Logan on the line, you're talking about the Gaddy twins, one of <clears> which <throat> plays quarterback, one of which plays on the defensive line. Now that's uh, a college line. That, <laughs> it's amazing the athletes guys. that they have there. <laughs> Uh, Catrail Cuffey is a great uh, wide receiver DB. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just a good handful of players, good handful of prospects there that are certainly going to get college attention and they're going to cause problems for their opponents this year. All right. Well, um, as always, there's the last team is Lake Taylor High School. They've been, a, they've been the dominant team. They've been the, the flagship for the Eastern District and for the Norfolk Public Schools and rightly so. Coach Sawyer, uh, his, his he and his staff have been there for over 10 years now, and, and they've just gone by their, about their business day in and day out. So what can we look for Lake Taylor um, and then some of the highlighted players there? Well, they're certainly king of the hill. There's no doubt about that. They are the team to beat in the Eastern District. They've proved it year in and year out recently. Uh, key seniors, Shaheem Johnson, got thrust in the quarterback role last year as the third string guy coming in to play against Oscar Smith, and you know he couldn't have gotten very many reps coming into that game. The uh, Smith game is long behind them, but right. believe me, it still sits in their mind as a weakness that they want to fight against. Sure. Uh, they will take no opponent lightly, and they want to run the table like they did a couple of years ago in winning the state championship. So you'll expect to see Shaheem take a leadership role. Mm -hmm. You also expect Nyree Quinterly, son of Coach another, John Quinterly, another. and another recruit. Right. He's already committed to East Carolina. Um, they don't have a Jalen Holmes type player this year that's dominant, head and shoulders above everyone else, but they still have the cohesiveness, they still have the team mentality, and they still certainly believe that they can't be beaten. Uh, they're just a winning program yeah, that, that, and that Sawyer has built. Something that Coach Sawyer um, preaches, I mean, you know, the being positive and, and, and every time they walk on the field, they think they're going to win the football game, and that's that's something to say. So, yes. um, you know, th there's some other players at Lake Taylor High School uh, on the, the younger side, uh, sophomore side. Again, some of these big linemen. Mm -hmm. um, it, oh, Darnell it, Yule. Yeah. Uh, I remember name. the first time <laughs> I saw him coming up from the middle school mm -hmm. ranks. He hadn't even played a down of varsity football yet. Yet, uh, Darnell is about six foot two and 280 pounds coming in as a freshman. Of course, he's gotten a little bigger since then. Yeah. Uh, he is certainly going to be a, a presence for them on the lines. Wayne Davis is a hot cornerback prospect mm -hmm. who gets a lot of attention regionally and nationally, and you can look for him to be one of the most heavily recruited players in his class. He's just coming into his junior season. Okay. Uh, so there's a lot to look yeah. forward to. Lake Taylor <laughs> is not going away anytime soon. All right. Well, we're, we look forward to seeing all these teams in action. Now, let, let's talk a little bit about um, how do you think the who will win the Eastern District? I'm going to put you on the hot seat, and I'm not going to predict that. Sure. And then what teams do you think will qualify for the for the regional playoffs and, and potentially even move into that state level um, playoff? Well, you have to put Lake Taylor in the conversation for winning. It's now the mythical Eastern District since the right. conference system is in place and the district doesn't exist anymore. However, they're playing that Eastern District yeah. schedule. So if you have to call a winner of the Eastern District, you have to put Lake Taylor in the conversation. You have to put I.C. Norcom in the okay. conversation because Norcom is as strong as ever. They are sort of a mirror of the Lake Taylor program. Uh, they're not as big, but they're certainly as fast. They're certainly as skilled and they're certainly as well coached. Yeah, so Coach that's Archie going to be a the nice job there. That's going to be the challenge for Lake Taylor in their so-called district schedule this mm -hmm. year is taking on Norcom and uh, that game may determine who's going to win the district. Okay. Beyond that, you can certainly see Booker T as a potential playoff team. I would look at uh, Norview again as a potential playoff team and Maury. Uh, so the good news is for Norfolk Public Schools, yeah. we should see a lot of teams in the playoffs. Well, Andy, again, a lot of good information. Just real briefly, tell us about your website and how the parents and the athletes and, and the coaches can, can can find you. And I know we can find you every night somewhere on a Friday night football field. Absolutely. So. Every Thursday, it ends up being Thursday night, Friday night, and sometimes Saturday afternoon that I'm on the football field. And we have a team of photographers and a team of videographers that capture a lot of the action in the area. So any Saturday morning, Friday night, 
you can expect actually 365 days a year you can find high school football action whether it's on recruiting or whether it's on action on the games on recruit757.com it's a it's an all-inclusive database of who's who in the entire 757 area code from Williamsburg to Virginia Beach we also put on events okay. that help parents with the recruiting process. Those are educational events, we have camps, we have a lot of activities, again, all year round, 12 months a year, right. to support the football community. Sounds great. Again, we, thanks for being here. Thank you. Right. More MPS Now after this. Welcome back to MPS Now and the Fall Sports Special. We're here to talk a little bit about volleyball, and we have Coach Tim Maynard from Granby High School and one of his key players, Lizzie Lewis. Welcome. All right. Welcome. Coach Maynard, <clears throat> talk about your volleyball program a little bit. Um, well, I've been the coach there for about 10 years now, and uh, we've been pretty successful, especially in district. The first year we came in third, and I think we have either tied or won district um, all the other um, eight years that we've been there, so we've been okay. doing pretty well. All right. You, you, you've been involved for a while. Tell us a little bit about how you've built this program to, to the point where it is right now and the success it's had. Um, it's funny, me and Lizzie were kind of talking about that in the car because we knew there might be a question like that. And um, I would say it goes to one of our philosophies. One of my philosophies is I always tell kids, try out, start the day I meet you. Um, because that goes into one of my other philosophies where champions always do things right. So you can watch a kid and how they interact in the hallway and how they act in adverse situations and kind of see if they have that character and then of course you do need some athleticism and talent too so but always um, important yeah when you have the combination of both I've kind of surrounded my team with great students and kids that are competitive in the classroom um, the kid that might not get a hundred on the test but makes a 96 but is still upset the kid beside him beat him with a 98 because um, that person is competitive and if they're that competitive and athletic then they are striving for excellence and okay get a big group of that together and you're probably going to have some success. Lizzie, tell us a little bit about you and how you got involved in, in volleyball, uh, in athletics at Granby High School. And it sounds like you're fitting his model here. So tell us a little bit about uh, your <laughs> uh, well, background. Yeah, I have a 3.8 GPA uh, to start off with. I'm in the IB program at Granby and the RTC program. Very well rounded, if I say so myself. Uh, <laughs> Um, Arrogance helps too. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very competitive person, like no matter what I do, and, same thing with like the test he was just talking about like if that person gets like a 96 and I have like a 95 I'm gonna ask to like do corrections or do something to bring my grade back up and um, that's just that's just how it is for me I just okay. I just have that in me just to go out and do better than what I'm doing. How, how does that uh, transition into your volleyball then? If you're competitive in the classroom you're obviously going to be competitive on um, the court. One of our, one of my philosophies is I'm my greatest coach. So I, if I'm doing something wrong, I sit down and think about what I'm doing wrong and how I'm going to fix it to make the team better. Okay. All right. Now, all right, Coach Maynard. I, I'll feed. I'll, I'll piggyback off ahead. of that comment. Is uh, it, and she can attest to this that I, I blame myself every time we lose. Um, Lizzie might get up and serve seven balls in the net, but that's not her fault. That's my fault because I'm responsible for getting them prepared to play. So if they're not prepared to play, um, even though I didn't hit the ball in the net, it really wasn't my fault technically if you really think about it. But if I'm the one responsible getting ready to play and they weren't ready to play, then that's my fault. And I kind of get everybody on that mode where let's just all blame ourselves for whatever's not going right and try to fix it. And that really, you know, that takes, I'm not worried about what you did wrong. I'm worried about what did I do wrong? What, what do I need to do differently at practice to get us ready to play? All right, so you, you guys are working out now. You're practicing. The season's getting ready to start. How do you think the season's going to go? Well, if you would asked me this a week ago, I would have said I was a little nervous, and we had to talk about that at practice because at camp, we went to UNC team camp, and I didn't think we looked that well. And um, we had a little scrimmage um, against first flight down, and, you know, it was kind of a, I don't know, we drove down there. We didn't look that good. But we just had a scrimmage last Thursday where we really uh, excelled. One of, one of the best, I'll say, best three matches we played since I've been at Granby almost. Okay. And Callie Butler is still not on the floor, who's one of our better players. All right. And we beat Great Bridge, Deep Creek, and, and Bayside in that scrimmage. Um, Bayside gets another shot at us today in our tournament. But um, So I preseason they put a little target on us and ranked us 10th. Um, I saw in the paper today. But I would say realistically, we're probably somewhere right there to start. Right. 
So let, let's just kind of talk about all the volleyball teams in the Eastern District. Okay. Um, we know Granby's going to do well. Um, what about some other teams? Um, well, Lake Taylor has something interesting. They, they got the Booker T boys coach, is now at Lake Taylor's girls coach. And um, she's a good player and, and a really good coach. She, she had some success and had those guys over there really hitting the ball. So um, with the athletes they have at Lake Taylor, she pulls a couple of them, and that, that should be an interesting okay. um, combination. I, I would think that that definitely puts them as the next, next team um, in the lineup. Lizzie, you, you play Eastern District Volleyball, and then you go into Conference Volleyball, um, specifically um, Conference One. Um, how, how's that, um, how does that go? I mean, do you, can you tell a difference in the competition? And do you prepare a little bit different? Um, I prepare for every game the same. I just, you always have to keep your intensity up no matter what you're playing or where you're playing at. You just got to keep your intensity up. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> so looking at the conference, um, who's your biggest, um, what, what's the team in the conference that is going to pose some challenges for you? Well, there's a couple, but I know um, I want to hang with uh, some of the good teams, so we're, we're working on it we're in the gym since June, okay. practicing. Coach, conference level, who, who um, are we looking at? Well, you can look at the top ten and see conference one is the number one conference, hands mm -hmm. down. Uh, four of the top ten are in conference one. Number one, first colonial, number one in the whole area. Uh, number four was Ocean Lakes um, in the whole area. Uh, number eight was Cox, and number ten was us. So our four top teams, you know, and then you have Bayside who has six seniors and got a 6-2 middle in who's not in the top ten, and you have Lanstown who came in fourth last year just ahead of us. Um, they also had heavy graduation, and then you have Tallwood. So, I mean, realistically, six teams in our conference could be top ten teams. Okay. Um, or definitely probably top 14 teams. I mean, I would say Bayside and Lansdowne are definitely the next group. Now, now with volleyball, it's the Virginia High School League. Uh, obviously, we went into the realignment last year, and volleyball was um, a little different. Um, it, at the girls' level, they had six state champions. At the boys' level, um, we had um, three state champions where class four, five, and six were, were teamed together to create one championship. And then I think it was three, 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 and three was one, and then two and one uh, was a championship. This year, one class one, two, three, and four um, have their own state championship. Class five has their own state championship, and class six. So, for boys volleyball, that that can benefit um, uh, a team like Booker T that had to go up against Cox. Um, so um, yes, so volleyball in the city could we could potentially see some teams advancing. Um, um, so yeah, if we if we get our enrollment down where we get out of that top tier there, um, that would definitely be true. Okay. Um, Cox and PA are number one and two on the boys side. Uh, Moore is number four though, and uh, that that's pretty close to a legitimate ranking. I was just reading that, and and I know who they have, and I know who the other guys have, and okay. they're definitely somewhere in that top six group, uh, legitimately. Um, so, yeah, right. I think some of our other Eastern District teams could find success. It is difficult though because we don't. Some people on the beach always ask me, well, why can't you get up to that top five level? And we just simply don't have enough players playing year round mm -hmm. um, like they do out there. But then I always come back with, well, how come we win so many basketball championships in the Eastern District? Because our kids are playing all the time. They're playing AU, they're playing go out to the playground. I mean, you have 50 kids out there that are playing in almost every neighborhood every day, you know, and you just need five, six of those guys to make a really good run, eight girls too. I mean, Lake Taylor girls had success, Booker T boys, uh, Norcom boys, also in the Eastern District, so. Well, you know. with the new conferences, um, competition always brings out the best, so um, it's a work in progress for our teams. We know we have to play the best to, to be the best, so um, uh, we look forward to a really good volleyball season. I want to thank both of you for being here, and uh, we'll see you on the volleyball court. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. More MPS now after this. Welcome back to NPS Now and the Fall Sports Special. I'm here with Robin Williams from Booker T. Washington High School, the new athletic director. Robin, welcome. 
Thank you, Steve. All right. Robin, tell us a little bit about yourself um, and how you uh, have become the new athletic director at Booker T. I've been teaching in Norfolk Public Schools for current, currently for 16 years. I started off at Ruffner Academy where I was the athletic director there for five years. I then went to Booker T. Washington High School where I was the volleyball coach, assistant track coach, and forensics coach. This year I was honored with getting the position as athletic director. Um, I'm excited about the position. I have a lot of plans in store to make our athletic program grow and develop and to involve the community and students and teachers and faculty and everything uh, as a part of our athletic program so they can be a diverse program and our students can get the best quality education and athletic experience possible. Okay. Well, you, you, you obviously have some experience. Um, you mentioned that you were the middle school athletic director at Ruffner. Um, how long ago were you at Ruffner? I've been at Booker T. This is my ninth year at Booker T. Okay. So you were really one of the first athletic directors at the middle school level uh, when we started middle school sports. Yes. So, okay. So how do you think um, taking those experiences and then coming into to this new experience, um, you've been out of the administrative um, um, realm for a while, so um, how do you think that's going to help you transition in, uh, back into that uh, administrative role? I think that's the greatest part of my transition experience, the fact that I had that experience early on. And when we started off being athletic directors in middle school, we were trying to mirror the high school program anyway. So I got a lot of knowledge from that that I'm bringing towards w with me to Booker T. Mm -hmm. Okay. So <clears throat> you, you've obviously gotten your feet wet a little bit. You've been on the job for about a month now. Um, what, are, what are some of the challenges that, that, you, that have come, come to you right now? And what, so. Some of the challenges is athletic director is a fast-paced community. Um, we never have the same day twice. Every day is a different day. We learn different things. We have different challenges. And I think that's what I like the most about the position is that I like a challenge. I like fast pace. I like spontaneous things. And I'm looking forward to it. Okay. So um, you're new. Um, were you able to, were you involved in hiring any new coaches? I mean, are you, have you retained some of your, your current, your past coaches? What's the coaching staff looking like at Booker T? It was a great thing that I came from Booker T, which is one of our, I mean, from Ruffner, which is one of our feeder schools. So a lot of the coaches that I was athletic director for at Ruffner are currently coaching at Booker T. So they already know me. So I was able to retain a lot of the coaches that were there. However, I have been able to hire new coaches as well. And in some of the sports, we needed a change. We needed a new, fresh start. And I think the coaches that, that have been selected for those sports are going to bring a great experience to our school. All right, you, you, you've had past experience in, in, as a coach. How do you think that is going to help you deal with your coaches mm -hmm. on the situations that, because their day, day is different every day right. as well. So. Right. Um, coincidentally, the two sports that I coached were, were forensics and volleyball. I have new coaches for those two positions, and I've been working closely with both of those coaches to make sure that they adapt to the new environment, they can adjust to the change. One of them is brand new to the system. She's very enthusiastic. She's excited about the position, and we, it should be a good year for us. Okay. All right, let's, let's talk about, you know, the upcoming season, fall. Um, you know, football is a big, uh, it's a big sport for, for all the schools. But what can we expect at Booker T? And at their, you have four f home football games. Yes. What can we expect at, uh, at those games? We have a lot of surprises for you at our games. Out of the four, three of the four are going to have some big surprises. Um, I encourage everyone to come out, alumni, teachers, faculty, staff, students. We should have a lot of things in store. There should be some good plays going on. Our football team has beefed up. We have some big boys. They have been practicing hard. They have been dedicated to the program. Coach Flowers has brought in some new coaching staff to his football team as well, and we're looking forward to a great season. All right. One, one thing new at Booker T is that field house. Yes. How do you think that's going to kind of tie the stadium in? The field house is going to bring a, uh, a warmth of a great motivation for our boys. I think the team needed that. That's going to pump them up. It's going to make them feel a little bit like they're NFL players. Mm -hmm. um, they're excited about the building of the field house. We're, we've been watching it daily as it progressed, and we're almost completed with the yeah. project. Okay. All right. Um, so, I want to sell you a program. 
to the community. How can the community, how can parents get involved and support Booker T. Washington Athletics? I've taken over concessions so parents can become a part of our boosters and help with concessions. We've also um, have what is called our new sports marketing classes and through the sports marketing classes we're going to sell a lot of Booker T. Washington paraphernalia. Um, we're going to sell ads in our programs. We'll advertise ads on our internet. We're also we can you can get an ad place in our gymnasium for a fee. So we're asking that anyone that could be a sponsor to come out and sponsor our team, sponsor our athletic program, and help our students to become greater students. Okay, great. All right, so um, again, going back, you're, you're brand new to, to the high school athletic director's position. Uh, part of that is the Virginia High School League. Um, how, how have you come, up, come to understanding uh, the new conference regions that you're currently in? Not, go, not going into the future, because we know where you're going, but um, how, how's that uh, working out? One thing about the athletic direct, director's world is everybody help each other out, mm -hmm. and I'm grateful for that. So as a, a part of my training, I've been able to meet with various athletic directors in the area. Um, they don't mind sharing their ideas. They don't mind sharing their thoughts. They don't mind sharing their hardships to help me out in my um, trick, matriculation through this process. So um, other athletic directors have helped tremendously. Yeah, that, that's a little different than coaches all want to keep their own stuff, but yes. ADs are, are are folks that we're all in the, we're in the, the same, same world. Path. So, yes, uh, we do help each other out. Yes. Well, Robin, um, I wish you luck uh, because I know I want to see Booker T succeed in everything that they do. Um, I know Miss Day, who's uh, hired you as the athletic director, uh, is behind you uh, and is going to support you. Um, so we wish you um, great luck this season uh, in, in not only your teams but uh, just uh, leading the uh, the Booker T athletic program um, to, to new heights. Thank you. So, we want to thank you for being here. Thank you. Right. Make sure you check out your big team websites for all information on your favorite team. This includes schedules, results, and highlights of each contest. I'm Steve Setmiller. Thank you for watching this fall sports edition of NPS Now.